So this, this is okay, right? I mean, you have some cool features, the weapon models are decent, the environment looks relatively clean, and look at that, there's even a seagull. I think this is a fully released 10 out of 10 quadruple A game, don't you think? Wrong. Look how stupid you look now with your pants. <laughs> this was my game about four months ago, and this is what it looks like now. I'm sure you're wondering how Rift went from looking like a sour potato to an award-winning quintuple A definitive edition RTX 198K game. So let's get into it. Hey there, Carblings, Matt here. Welcome back to the channel. And let me tell you, it has been a freaking journey to get to this point. And this video is gonna be a heck of a ride because once again, I rebooted the whole game. So grab a snack, get comfy and enjoy the video. After the second devlog, I was working on a build to share with you all, and it was going pretty well. I had added a lot more features, including a grapple knife, more vehicles, and even a cinema. I even got to the actual prototype stage where I released it to the server. But after realizing how much the fundamentals for mechanics, combat, and movement were flawed and could be majorly improved, I did the unthinkable, the unfathomable. Some might even say the unpossible. I took everything I had worked on up until that point and scrapped it started a new Unity project, and rebuilt everything from the ground up. I haven't been able to do everything that I had in the old version, but everything included in the newer project is 100 times better, and is way more optimized for both performance and build size. So let's get into what changed. A quick disclaimer though, I didn't have access to the project or my PC for the majority of the summer, but I still tried to work on Rift as much as I could, so all of what I'm about to show you is a result of about one to two months work, and I'm positive that production is going to speed up dramatically now that everything is settled down. If you're new around here, let me explain Rift a little. Rift is an ability and movement based sci-fi FPS set in the near future. The finished game will have both single player and multiplayer options. In the game, you will find and upgrade your abilities to better suit your playstyle. The end goal is to have as much customizability so that the game will complement and reward pretty much any playstyle. And there's your basic rundown. Now let's get into the bread and cheese of the video. Let's start with the movement. I'm going to try and keep this part short and sweet, because this is the third time I'm redoing the movement. I've taken new inspiration from an incredible first-person platformer called Ghost Runner. The movement in Ghost Runner is deceptively simple and feels very responsive. I rarely fell off the edges of stuff while playing, and there was always a sense of flow and continuity when it comes to the physics of the movement. When I came back to Rift, I noticed multiple issues. It didn't feel as responsive as it should. Since there wasn't a mantle or a vault, yet, Falling off platforms was very unforgiving, and the wall hop seemed more like a gimmick than an actual mechanic. And lastly, there weren't enough effects to make the movement feel smooth and satisfying. After I started the new project, I wrote down all the stuff I thought I could change and got to work. The first thing I did was add camera movement for running, wall hopping, and sliding. This alone made a world of difference. While I was making the slide, I accidentally set the rotational value on the side instead of the front, and I got this strange tilt and I just never fixed it, but I really liked the slide tilt when sliding, so I just kind of kept it. All this to say, the camera movement was a big check. I also made big changes to the slide. Instead of conserving your momentum like it did previously, I had it reset two thirds of your momentum and added a capped force in the combined direction between the player inputs and the camera view rotation. This allows for a much snappier and controlled sliding. You can't change direction instantaneously, but you have a lot more control over the direction you can slide in. Another very big change since the previous version are the weapons. After the second devlog, I realized that shooting with minimal camera effects is optimal for movement or platforming games, because with too much camera shake or camera movement, the player can lose their orientation in the game world. So I took all the effects I overlaid in the past version and turned them down a lot. This made the shooting and platforming combo a lot more manageable. As you probably noticed, I also updated all the weapon models and most of their sounds as well. I actually brought down a sound designer to come help out with that stuff. Brawl has been doing great work so far and helped me engineer almost all of the overcharged weapon sounds, and I'm very glad to be working with him. I also have a programmer now who's been helping me with the coding side of things. You can thank him for the amazing procedural camera animations, and we're cooking up a lot of cool systems that will be shown off in the next devlog. Something very new that I did to all the weapons is make them overchargeable. Overcharging your weapons makes them all glowy and changes their properties to essentially change the gun you're holding into something completely different. Here's how it works. You get a gun, you kill some enemies to get their drops, the small ones are podlets and the big ones are pods. 
eventually the models here will get replaced and won't just be capsules and spheres, but for now you get the idea. Or, instead if you don't want to kill enemies, you can get pods and podless from pod chests. These recharge your health and also charge your suit. This is the meter that shows you the charge level. This is Clinton. Equip the weapon that you want to overcharge, hit Q, and now you have the original weapon's older, more mature, smarter, stronger, and thicker cousin. I plan on making every single weapon in the game overchargeable. So when you pick up a new weapon that you haven't seen before, you have the mystery of what it does when it's overcharged. Here are a few of the current overcharged variants. I'm still experimenting with gunplay, but I'm in a great spot in relation to that, because everything the gun does on screen, minus the overcharge animations, is completely procedural. The shooting, running, reloading, everything. So changing the feeling of a gun is pretty simple. I just have to narrow down on exactly what I want for each gun. I also added melee weapons at some point, but they were way too broken and didn't work very well. I do plan on revisiting melee weapons in the future and perhaps even letting the player build and customize their own melee weapon with their own parts, but we'll have to wait and see what the future holds. As I'm sure you probably already noticed, there's been a lot of UI changes as well. The previously very temporary or even non-existent HUD has been replaced with what I think to be a much cleaner one. I got this amazing pack for UI that includes some great UI management scripts, animations, and sprites that I use for the pause and main menus. Speaking of the pause menu, I added a new feature I haven't really seen done anywhere else, but has become one of the most useful things in the menu, especially as a dev or a game tester. Enter the notepad. The notepad allows the player to take notes on whatever they want, save and copy it as well. It's used for bug testing or troubleshooting, or even just keeping track of things you want to do or explore in the game. Speaking of exploring, that leads me to my next big change. I've decided to change Rift a lot in terms of scope and concept. Previously, I was thinking of just having an open world that the player can explore, and then having missions dotted around, sort of like what you see in Halo Infinite. But I scrapped that model for the sake of time, and for the sake of time that it's not the funnest thing ever. Instead, I decided to have missions be separate, but each new area will have an optional open world you can explore. It'll be filled with secrets and side missions, but I'll keep these open sections relatively small. Think Metro Exodus style. I want to keep the sandboxiness of my original idea, but also be able to use the constraints of more linear missions. While we're on the topic about sandboxes, Rift wouldn't be a real sandbox game if you didn't have commands. That's right. I added a command console to Rift. At the moment, there aren't too many commands you can actually do, but all the stuff that has been added so far can prove either very useful or very funny. Moving on to abilities, I also changed the way I want them to work. In the last devlog, I stated that I wanted to have the system to be similar to the system that Hyperscape had, but I've decided to have something a bit more similar to the crafting bench workflow you have in other games, in the sense that you'll have an upgrade station, and you can go there in order to uplink your new abilities to your suit, or upgrade certain ones you already have. In order to get your hands on these abilities, you'll have to find them around the levels and complete a puzzle to unlock them. At least that's what I'm thinking. These upgrade stations will serve more than one purpose though. This will also be where the player can change their cosmetics, the color of their weapons or character, build melee weapons, etc. They might even have more uses in the future, but I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. Another very big thing that's changed since the last devlog is the story. If you watched the second devlog and remembered the story, I advise that you forget everything you thought you knew, because literally everything has changed. Here's a brief summary of what the story is like now. Humanity has always been resourceful. It overcomes any obstacle it faces with whatever it has. Overpopulation was solved by sending half of humanity to Mars, global warming was solved with the global cooling plant, and the global food shortage was solved with its hyper-GMOs. Humanity used its resources and its intelligence to overcome these problems. But nowadays, the problems aren't the problem. The problem 
is the solution. The earth is running out of resources, and humanity won't be able to maintain itself without them. I'm talking about water, minerals, and even the atmosphere. They're all running out. Things were looking grim for humanity. They began to call this period of time of lack of resources the beginning of the end, or Tiboti for short. Some people thought war was the only option, fighting each other for the little resources there were left. Some prayed and others just looked up to the stars and searched for salvation from Tiboti. Humanity was on the verge of collapse. Then the rift appeared. Its appearance was catastrophic, destroying Mars and killing everyone that was in the colonies, as well as the main character's parents. The Rift's formal name was Gate 111, but most people just called it the Rift. It linked our dimension with another one, a pocket dimension we called Zion. Some people hated the Rift for what it destroyed, and other people rejoiced at the fact that the Rift brought Zion, which was full of the resources that humanity needed. Meta and other harvesting corporations harvested as many of the resources it could from Zion. It was enough to sustain humanity for another million or so years, and there were still a lot of resources left over. They even found a resource previously unknown to humankind called Astrophyte. Astrophyte was a refined metal which was capable of storing and releasing energy, kind of like the Black Panther suit, except it could also store different types of energy, not just kinetic. It was invaluable back on Earth, and Meta made billions of dollars from it. The one issue with Astrophyte is that it was hard and expensive to find. To solve this issue, Meta created the Shikari program. The Shikari program let people with little or no experience in anything travel to Zion and work for Meta as a seeker for Astrophyte. Once they found some, they would report back to Meta, and a percentage of the money they made off what they found is given back to them. People started flooding in to be Shikari at first, eager to see the new frontier Zion offered, and looking for a way to get rich quick. But everyone soon realized the perilous nature of the job. Zion was a very dangerous environment. It definitely wasn't for everyone. So the Shikari program became more of a program for the desperate, the crazy, and the proud. Despite the social outlook on the Shikari program, Meta was making a lot more money than they were before. They were rich, humanity was saved, and there were tons of jobs for everyone who was left behind from the Mars incident. But Meta got greedy. They wanted more Astrophyte. And once Zion started running out, they started studying and experimenting with the Rift to learn how to bring about their own artificial Rift formerly called Gate 112. This man-made rift would be able to open up to any dimension so that they could harvest Astrophyte from as many different places as they desired, essentially creating unlimited money. They knew that opening another rift was unnecessary and dangerous. It just so happened that Zion was a docile dimension and didn't contain anything humanity couldn't handle, like sicknesses or even worse. But Meta didn't care. Meta didn't care that the odds were stacked against them a trillion to one. The chances that they managed to link to another dimension that was as docile as Zion was practically impossible. However, this didn't stop them. They wanted money and they were going to open another rift if that's what it took to get it. That's the end of the prologue. The part where the player is actually playing the game comes after all of this. The main character is an orphan boy called Seth Dyer. His parents were killed in the Mars Rift incident when he was only a boy. Because of this, he took part in the hate towards the Rift. When his parents died, he inherited all of their debt. He grew up on the streets barely surviving. Since he had little to no work experience that he could put to use down on Earth, when he got old enough, he signed up for the Shikari program. During the training, you learn about Meta's plan to build a second gate and set out to stop them, all whilst braving the dangerous and unknown lands of Zion. Rift is going to be released in an episode structure. So in episode 1, you'll be playing the first 8 to 10 missions and unlocking the first sandbox play area. Then there will be around 3 or 4 more episodes, and then ending in the great finale. In terms of pricing, because a lot of people ask me about that, the multiplayer portion will be completely free, but the campaign will be paid, approximately 5 to 15 US dollars. And you only have to buy it once, and you'll get access to all the story and future DLCs. Cosmetics, I want to be both free and paid. You'll be able to buy the in-game currency and purchase things from the store if you want, but you don't have to. You gain in-game currency for playing the game well, and over time that accumulates into enough to actually buy stuff from the store. Big catch being, it will not take forever. I know in some games, like Fortnite for example, it could take a while to earn enough V-Bucks for free before you can buy the battle pass or a skin. I think that's just complete BS to be frank, and I'll make it affordable for both paying and freebie alike. A lot of people have been asking me what graphical style I want to have for the finished product of Rift. I think I'm setting on a stylized yet clean look. I'm thinking Valorant x Halo. Also in relation to graphics, a lot of people have been asking me on how we achieve the graphics you're seeing on screen now. I used a wonderful asset called Cozy Weather, which I bought in the asset store in combination with a vertical fog shader I've been using. The volumetric lights are also really aren't all that. I got the idea from Krunker, again, where they fake the effect using a mesh and a texture. The ones in Rift right now are composed of cone-shaped meshes that I simply overlay an emission and a noise texture to. This is way more performant. Before I wrap up this video, I quickly want to apologize for taking so long to upload something. 
As I explained before, I didn't have the project, so I couldn't really do much. So instead, I spent a lot of time writing up the new story, making a GDD, and doing tons and tons and tons of concept work. I also want to apologize for making you guys wait this long and not dropping another build, but I promise I'm working on it. For the next devlog, I wanted to focus a lot on gameplay and combat. So for that, I will most likely have a build out that you can go and test and give me feedback on. Although if you want to access the builds I might post on a whim, you should join the Discord server. The link is in the description. But anyway, that's all I wanted to share with you all today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a dislike, unsubscribe, and tell me how much of a piece of crap I am in the comments. If you didn't, smash that like button, destroy the subscribe button. You can even hit the bell to be told when I upload something new. And if you really, really, really hate me, you can join the Discord server down below for exclusive updates and opportunities to show off your stuff. Or give feedback on the game, get offered as a sacrifice to Clinton, or just hang out with the rest of the carblings. All right, have a great rest of your morning, day, night, or evening. And remember, live every day like it's Thursday.